and welcome to another edition of Trail Talk TV. Uh, today we're coming live from the office and we've got Freddie Turner with us today. Freddie, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And Freddie's the Director of Strategy at MIQ, is that correct? That's right. And it's just a pleasure to have her in the office because we don't have many people here uh, due to COVID over the last uh, couple of months, so it's great to have her in the office. So Freddie, we're talking today about the cookie this future, right? And we're, we're going to talk about some of the strategy you're working on and some of the partners you're working on. But before we jump into that, uh, let's just give you some of an overview of MIQ. Everyone knows MIQ, but let's see what's, what's happening over there and just give our, our viewers uh, the latest, please. Yeah, so MIQ are a programmatic media partner. So we work with agencies, we work with advertisers, and we build programmatic media solutions for them. We use multiple different data sets we're technology agnostic so we can work with any dsps any dmps any um, technology that we need to use to execute campaigns effectively and we can do this across all programmatic media channels so um, digital out of home display video etc which i think is why we're looking so much into cookieless because obviously using all of these data sets you know, the way that we've run media in the last 10 years is not going to be the way that we run media in the next 10 years. And that's a good segue to what we're going to talk about today because the future is here, people. Cookieless future, privacy first future. Uh, and we all need to get ahead of this. So, Freddie, let's talk about this because you're working pretty hard on this. I want, to, I want you to kind of run through your the company's view of the current ecosystem because you see... Uh, this sort of uh, sort of issue in a different sort of lens, and you've got this uh, narrative around these four specific ID types that will emerge. So let's talk about that first before talking about how you actually use that to build sort of solutions as well. Yeah, so we want to continue to make sure that we can use data in the most the most important way, but also in a privacy first way. So. Finding cookie solutions is really important. And the industry as a whole is all starting to look into these, these cookie solutions. And I think there are four main cookie solutions that are in existence at the moment. The first is recognised identity. So the second is um, anonymous contextual. And this has been around for a long time. And we've always placed the importance of an ad around the contextual environment that it's mm. in and understanding what the value of that is. The third is authenticated identity. And this is about using one-to-one -one data. So, so hashed email, exactly. uh, sort so, of identifier type thing. Exactly, so partnering with businesses like LiveRamp, MIQ are then able to build these solutions to collect, connect online and offline data together. And the final one is around aggregated identity. So what this means is using that individual consumer data to understand the patterns and trends, but then crucially aggregating that data to make sure that it's still privacy first but you've still got that addressability so this is the this is the interesting one here so i mean these are obviously um uh existing uh identifiers right contextual everybody's got contextual solution these days authenticated is pretty big because live ramp made a big play in it um uh um the trade desk with our id 2.0 but this seems to be the most interesting emerging one here so i want to talk about this specifically because this is a big thing that you guys are working on so let's talk about aggregated identity and i want to talk about how you're working with partners to build out that solution yeah so one of the partners that miq have partnered with recently is skyrise intelligence and skyrise intelligence is a layer of technology which sits within telco's uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. so what that really allows for us to do is take that individual consumer data from mobile first uh, in a mobile first way to then be able to aggregate that data and gives MIQ the opportunity to then use that that first that first party data, but in a privacy first way. So if we look at how this works, so you've got the telco here, and within the telcos, Skyrise has access to 20 million unique handsets. If you think about mobile data, it's the most important data set, the most rich data set that really we can have access to because everyone's got a mobile. Everybody uses Everybody's it. Everybody's using it all the time. It tracks where you're going, mm. where you've been, what you're interested in, which apps you're using, mm. etc. So what Skyrise does is Skyrise sits in between the telco and then MIQ. And what it allows for this to do is run statistical pattern analysis to look at where are the patterns and the trends that are coming from these individual users and then aggregate that to then pass that to MIQ. Mm. 
So there are three main areas that I'm going to talk about today, but if you imagine that anything you do on your mobile can be tracked in this way and then crucially aggregated so that it's pseudo anonymized, so it's never actually then passed back to an individual user. Mm. We can never then reconnect that back to Alan Smith up here. Yeah. So we look at three main areas. Geo, where have people been? Where are they? What are they, you know, where have they been on the, with their phones? Mm -hmm. We look at app and domain usage. Mm -hmm. And we look at temporal. Because crucially, where people are, what they're doing, but then when are they doing that? So that we can really start to create that rich insight. And this isn't new from a planning perspective. I think planning has always been taking aggregated data and understanding what the patterns and trends of, of behaviours are. I think the really important thing is that what, what we're doing with this is that we're able to connect planning and activation together. Right. So this is interesting, though, because this speaks to what you guys do generally is that you take, uh, you know, you work with partners to take that technology and layer in your own intelligence. And it's quite it's, it's interesting to know to know here that this is not identifiable data. This is aggregated data that looks at specific user behaviour and then that data then is sort of appended to what you do as a company. Um, so we, could you explain how that sort of is brought out into the MIQ sort of machine, machine, programmatic machine, if you will, and where the magic happens? Yeah. So MIQ sits here. So we take the, the data from Skyrise. This is aggregated. And what we get is we get um, pattern analysis that shows across these three main areas. And the best way to demonstrate this is using a recent case study that we did for Subway. So what Subway had to do is, in the world of COVID, they had to shut all their stores initially. And what that meant was that then they had to pivot their business strategy in order to create opportunities to, to drive demand. Mm -hmm. So they launched a new lunchtime offer. But crucially, they only launched it in certain stores. And delivery was only two miles either side of that store. So the first challenge that you had was you only wanted to reach people who lived because everybody, no one was working at the time uh, in offices. So people were spending a lot of time within two miles of this, the, these only these relevant subway stores. Um, the second was that it was only available at certain times of the day. So we needed to make sure that those people were then here at, between those certain times so that they were eligible for the lunchtime offer. And the third was around delivery. This was only available on the three main delivery apps. So Just Eat... Uber Eats and Deliveroo. So what that meant was that we needed to build a subway audience where we could understand what did these people look like and how did they differ? So what did a Just Eat audience look like versus an Uber Eats audience versus a Deliveroo audience? And equally, what did really high usage and users look like who had maybe had all three, but who were also interested in using these delivery apps at certain times of the day? Because then we could start to build up this profile of what did that audience who were regularly ordering lunchtime deliveries to their homes who lived within these areas. So what Skyrise was able to do is we pass this information into Skyrise. Skyrise was then able to take all of this data and start to build out what those profiles looked like. So what were they, and so taking it back to the three main areas, where were they living? So within this two mile radius, you could start to build out the radius with the subway store here and then you know what did this look like where were they within this thing mm. and what what we then did is obviously everything's aggregated so you can start to see that you've got you know these these stores for example highly index with people who also have these apps because if you didn't have these apps it didn't matter whether you lived one minute from the store unless you were going to be downloading them mm. so then what we were able to do is map that back in an addressable way to trading so we had this data, we started to build out those indexes. So what domains were these uh, users using? So let's take time out as an example. So we could see that there was a really high propensity for these audiences who had these apps, who were using them at critical times of the day and were living within a two mile radius of subway. And we could then map out the top thousand domains that MIQ have access to across a multitude of our, the DSPs that we work with. And what that then allowed for us to do is start to see, okay, so they were high, they were high regular users of, say, timeout. And they over-indexed against the standard audience that would be on timeout. Because the beauty of this data is that we can see all of the people that are using 
all of the domains that we've listed out. So we can start to see which of these audiences are over and under indexing, depending on whether they fit into our target audience. So you're taking, <clears throat> so just to, to summarize some of this stuff, you're taking uh, specific segmentation around you, you, what you pushed into Skyrise. You're taking it back out and then basically you're building custom logic around your bidding patterns across these domains based on the data you have. So so it's like in a cookie this way as well. So this must be important to notice that there's no cookie being used in this process at all. This is all built on on sort of a privacy force uh, um, a view of the world. So so tell us about the, the, the custom um, targeting and custom sort of uh, execution because that's quite interesting as well. Yeah. So once you've started to build out these indexes and you can see that say there's 300,000 people a week on timeout and mm. of that 300,000 people, on certain days and certain times, those are much higher indexing to our Subway audience. And the reason that you can work this out is because we can see all of the domains and all of the apps from here mm. that people are visiting. Mm. So you can create this cr overlap and this index between who your audiences are for Subway and then where you can actually reach them with advertising. Okay. So once we've built up these indexes and we start to know, then that's where our data science and analyst teams in Bangalore in our center of excellence really come to life. So what they can start to do is build custom modeling, custom bidding scripts, so that we can make sure that for every single impression that we're buying, we understand how this fits in. So ultimately what this results in is 168,000 rows of data. And the reason that it results in that is because you've got the top thousand domains, you've got seven days a week, and you've got 24 hours a day. So we can start to really model out by the hour the value that we see on an impression. And if you then overlay that with the million postcodes that are in the UK, in order to create this relevance here, you've then got 168 billion rows of data, which actually becomes statistically invalid because it's just too much. So what we're able to do is combine the human ingenuity with understanding, okay, which geos are relevant? Where are we seeing these people? And then combine that with the custom bidding scripts in order to know whether we're bidding on the right impression, it's the right audience because it fits in with what we've seen up here um, at the right time of day, on the right day of the week, and crucially at the right cost. So I think that's really, really important. You know, if you don't understand how much to bid per impression, then actually you might be bidding too low and you won't be winning the mm. right impressions. But equally, you might be bidding too high because you need to understand what the likelihood of your audience being that impression. So let's, uh, so I'm gonna try troll Corval, right? This is great, right? And targeting is important, right? But ultimately, as a buyer, I want to know the success of this campaign, right? Conversions, because yeah. we're in a war, right, where Currently, we work on a post-view, post-click uh, post -click metric, and particularly for display and, and video advertising, it is post-view. But just tell me how you're approaching the measurement peaks, because that's the thing that, that, that's the really interesting thing yeah. here, right? That's the gold standard, right? This is amazing, but, you know, how do I know it works? You yeah, know? so I think measurement is the third piece of the pie, and it's the third big challenge with, uh, with cookies, with the demise of cookies. And I think making sure that we've got the measurement solutions in a privacy first world is really important. So you've got the planning, you've then got the activation and then solving the measurement challenge. Now, we're in a world at the moment where cookies do exist. So we can still use the traditional methods. We've been using uh, Google's experiment and Lyft in order to use um, cookies in order to identify whether one strategy and one methodology is working over another. And the results of Subway have been brilliant. This was a branding campaign. And so what we were able to see is that we'd reached 500,000 new customers for Subway. Now, obviously, that was using cookies and that was using things like brand awareness studies. But what we've also found is that CPAs have been drastically reduced. And again, that's using cookies and Google's experiment and Lyft uh, methodology. But what we're also reviewing is the other solutions in the market, because what we're talking about at the moment, if you're using cookies, is you're using um, only a limited amount of the market, only about 60% of the market. Chrome is not the internet, right? What about right. what about Safari users? I'm not really a Safari <laughs> user, but there are a lot of viewers who are Safari users. So we could do a whole new session on all the cookie-less measurement solutions that exist. Um, and I think what we're trying to do at the moment is really about education and about testing. So that we're because we're in this world at the moment where we can use these cookie-less privacy-first solutions and use the traditional cookie cookie methodology in order to test, in order to make sure that we're still 
making we're still delivering on these solutions mm. that work. Um, having said that, there are also cookie-less uh, measurement solutions out there that we're ah. testing. So using the likes of Google ADH to mm. be able to um, incorporate multiple different data sets and, and really understand the value of whatever it is that you're running. Um, but also there's blackout testing. And particularly for something like, like Skyrise, you can start to up or lift and down weight um, targeting and, and ads depending on which location you're in so that you can start to see success the uplift right. exactly so we've just done this with a finance uh, advertiser where they wanted to only reach students that were their customers but they didn't have their app so the way that we could do that was looking at the the only using the domain rather than the app and then also visiting student websites like ac.co.uk mm. websites and we were only ran this in three different regions in the UK. And what that allowed for us to do is then measure whether the app downloads were starting to increase only in these certain regions because nothing else had changed. They were still running their usual advertising strategies in the other markets, in the other locations. Mm. So what that, that is a totally cookie-less solution using all of this type of data. Do you think that we're like this is so this is one of the target uh, sort of uh, pr metrics they're going to use? But but do you think that the attribution piece is going to be very different from advertiser to advertiser? I mean, obviously we have a universal sort of like you know cookie sort of uh, solution right for measurement. But do you think the attribution model will change from advertiser to advertiser and depending on the ecosystem you're in? I I, I can see a situation where Google sort of has its own universal solution that everybody uses but i just don't see apple playing ball i don't see firefox playing. so you think that's an opportunity for a company like yourselves or independent ad tech to come in and build sort of robust attribution measurement solutions as well as target piece to help advertisers reach those audiences because like at the end of the day you're not going to as an advertiser you shouldn't ignore 40 percent of the popular particularly apple users who have all the money you know i, I mean it, but do you see that as an opportunity for you someone like yourselves to come in and build that sort of layer uh, in, in, in partnership with your, with your agency and, and, and brand partners? Yeah, I think if you go back to the beginning, we talked about the four solutions to cookie list, which I don't think there's going to be one holy grail no. measurement solution. But I think what we're able to do is start to incorporate all four of these into measurement solutions. And each of the, the big businesses are now, uh, the big tech companies are now uh, launching their own. So you've got Safari WebKit, which we're starting to test. Um, you've got Google Privacy Sandbox, you've got Google's ADH. So we're starting to look at all of the different solutions to essentially create what MIQ have always done, which is a sort of tech agnostic cookie stack so that we can start to work with advertisers depending on what access to first party data they have, what access to more authenticated identity that they've got, and then start to build out what is the right measurement solution for whatever the campaign might be and what the KPIs and ultimately what the business outcome that they're trying to achieve is. So I think the answer is that there isn't going to be one overall solution that's going to fit everything. But then for advertising, there's never a one size fits all solution for anything. Yeah, but programmatic, they try to have one solution to solve. But, <laughs> but that's actually quite an optimistic view for programmatic because like you, you generally get the view that people are negative about this. Oh, the world is ending. We need a cookie. We need a cookie. The reality is there are options out there that, that, that you can blend and use together that will make your advertising work. Yeah, and I think, crucially, work better. You know, I think if you look at this, this data set, privacy-first, cookie-less data set, is completely and utterly unique in terms of, you know, so actually looking for these solutions and finding these solutions to, you know, a problem that's been kind of coming for a while, I think is, is actually really interesting because we're starting to explore all of the different solutions and then how that they all stitch together in order to create one overarching ideal solution. And that's why we love independent tech, uh, ad tech, because it's about inclusion, right? It's got collaboration. So that was great. Freddie, thank you very much for that thank deep dive. That me. was excellent. And uh, it looks like we're going to have a bright future here. It's not all that bad. <laughs> so I'll see you next time on Trader Talk TV.